Most documentary makers will acquire their research information from one source, the interview. And for The Code, it was an important way to introduce the main characters to the viewers. Off we go. Uh, my name's Jeff Clark and I'm the lead physiotherapist for the Queensland Reds. I'm Anthony Fianga from the Queensland Reds, um, number 13. Launching in 2011, this Astra Award nominated show has quickly become one of Australia's leading sports series, going behind the scenes of the country's leading clubs in an effort to bring the inner sanctum of elite sport to an eager television audience. Join us as we take a quick look behind the scenes of the code to meet the filmmakers and to find out how the production comes together. This is a big game, coming here to play the Bulls. Uh, they're the title holders. Uh, we're playing them in their own backyard. We're thinking about how we can give back to the team and we're thinking about how we actually can be, have honest assessments and appraisals and discussion with each other. You should have already assessed what, what's in this game for you, all right? This can always be negative, but there's great positive for everyone, all right? I'll then take you through the laws of the tackle. The closely guarded environment of elite sport is never for sale. But the creators of the code worked hard to gain the trust of each sports club, allowing privileged access to the players, coaches and fans, and the opportunity for their story to be told. Well, I think the code is um, an important part of providing insight into areas where fans normally wouldn't, be, wouldn't have access. It took you inside uh, a rugby club and, um, and showed you the guys inside it. And, as a journalist, I can tell you stories about how they're decent blokes or the code was able to tell you um, and show you uh, in a nice format. The more we can do that in, in sport and the more we uh, engage and connect with our fan base, uh, the, the greater we'll have, the greater success we'll have uh, in attracting fans to our game and the code has certainly played a role in doing that um, both in its first season last year and, and this year with the Reds. We were heavily influenced by what a lot of the North American sporting organisations had done um, with a lot of their video product. The critical key difference for us was we wanted to embed ourselves for a lot longer, so we, we agreed that it would have to be a 12-month production timeline. Uh, many broadcasters and uh, production companies have, have tried in the past and not necessarily been too successful, so we wanted to um, keep it as small and, and uh, minimalist as possible. In terms of shooting the code, uh, digital SLR technology was identified as a good option, just in terms of its portability, uh, it doesn't get in the way, it's quite discreet when you're shooting with it. So in terms of the physical makeup of the camera, a digital SLR camera is essentially a stills body. So it's very small, very lightweight, extremely portable, and even with the accessories, the digital SLRs are still much smaller, much more discreet than the larger cameras used in documentary work. With a new technology and an untested workflow, the Code team spent a week with the Scots College First 15 as part of the Battle of the Hill documentary to put the cameras to work. The small crew and their minimal equipment integrated seamlessly into the team environment allowing the inner sanctum to be breached with minimum obtrusion. Once on location, the shooters implemented a number of production techniques when it came to filming the content. The most common was the use of a camera dolly and slider, a simple railing technology that allows the camera to execute tracking motion in almost every direction. Dolly shots allow the vision to last longer. Um, a simple locked off static shot of a subject will last one to two seconds, whereas a dolly shot of the same subject will give you approximately five to six seconds. And you get to see the subject from different perspectives. A similar technique was used with a camera crane, which allowed additional movement on a vertical plane, enabling the filmmakers to achieve an expansive cinematic style. We also used the GoPro camera, which is common nowadays amongst filmmakers, and we were no exception. 
it really does help hugely in getting the camera into places that a larger conventional piece of equipment may not. From capturing underwater vision to unique sporting perspectives, the GoPro provided quirky views of the action that are unique and sport specific. A high speed camera and software such as Twixter were used to generate slow motion movement, a popular tool for film and television editors to provide drama and emotion to standard footage. All of these elements combine to enable a stylized visual palette that assists in painting the story for the viewer. My role was predominantly in uh, post-production, which uh, means looking through a lot of footage uh, that's been shot throughout the almost year and a half that the, that the show was in, pro in production. In order for a fly-on-the-wall documentary sort of show to be a success, you really need to shoot a lot of footage. It's um, because you don't know when the moments are going to happen. The editing process is actually really difficult because you're pulling strings of story parts together in the form of clips and grabs, overlay, um, interview pieces, and making that into something which has a progressive flow to it is actually um, quite difficult. Hi, I'm Shane Burrell from Final Post, and we're here today in the studio outside the, the grading suite. And basically we looked after all the, the post-production aspect for the code. So everything, once the, the product was edited and everything was approved and locked off, we received the pictures and sound and mastered them ready to go to air. I think with grading, you need to experience it to really see what the difference is. You can't, um, you, you take it for granted when you see a picture, you think that's just it. But unless you see what it was like before or what it could be, then you don't really realise the, the value that it can add into it. You can, you can grade a picture so many different ways and you get so many different emotions from that same picture. So we're very fortunate to have uh, some of Australia's leading colourists work on this project. We had both Warren Lynch and Trish Cahill working on it. They come from uh, a strong feature film background and Warren um, regrading material for DVD releases such as the Lord of the Rings trilogy and projects like that. So these guys have just got an immense amount of experience. After the break, we look back at Series 1 and reveal an exclusive sneak peek of Series 2 and 3.